Hello, my name is Ernestina Fernandez. I am a teacher at a daycare and I, my research project is COVID in the schools. A quick COVID timeline. The first case was identified in Wuhan, China, December of 2019. And then on January 21st, there was the first case of COVID in Washington, DC. On March 13th, Trump declares a COVID state of emergency where we all went into quarantine and lockdown. And as of today, the death toll in Illinois is 12,851. The death toll in the U.S. in general is 265K. And worldwide, there have been 1.45 million deaths. But how has COVID affected our schools and students? Being a teacher myself, a Head Start teacher, um, my routine has changed drastically. Before I could just walk in and go straight into my classroom. Now I have to come into my school answer a mini questionnaire of if I knew if anyone had COVID, am I experiencing any symptoms? I have to take my temperature, I have to wash my hands, change into my indoor shoes, wash my hands again, and then go to my classroom to greet my students. <laughs> and that's only the beginning. <laughs> so how has COVID affected our students? As of right now, uh, their studies have been showing that there is a increase of an achievement gap, which to equivalent that to kids being in summer vacation when they lose all the information they learned over the year and then in summer vacation it just disappears and they have to start from square one when they come back to school. There is an estimate that that gap will now be bigger because of the schools not being open and online learning. Students will start the new year with an average of 66% in reading and a 44% in math, meaning that the students may be able to pick up math and reading when they come back in person will dis decrease drastically. And the two figures below, there is a how the school year would have been without the quarantine and the dotted lines here show the estimate when the schools closed and how there is the decrease. This is the estimation of what they believe the study done by um, Derera. The math will drop to 66% and reading will drop to 40%. And this is only for grades third grade to eighth grade. So there's a big drop in math and not so much of a drop in reading in eighth grade. Third graders, they're gonna fall behind. <laughs> Besides having a learning effect on our students and how online learning is difficult for them, there's also effects on their mental health. Uh, students may respond to crises that have, they have experienced by showing abrupt changes in their behaviors, in their routines, in their moods, in their The closing down of schools especially affects children of lower income because most children who are in lower income receive their food and their mental health services from schools. So a lot of children will be falling in the cracks. Some signs that you will see in pre-K students that the COVID have affected their mental health is by increased sleepiness, clinginess, extreme clinginess, and reverting age regression, meaning if you have a four-year-old and they start sucking their thumb again, they are age regressing. Signs in elementary school students are anger, an increase in anger, over-aggressiveness, like rough housing, but a little bit too rough. And in some cases, some children will go completely quiet. Like they will be, they will go from being a extrovert to an introvert. In middle schoolers, this affects their sleep. Some kids will get too much sleep. Some kids will not get enough sleep. And the same goes for food. Some kids will not eat enough or they will eat too much during the, the, the school closing. And there will be an increase of quarrels. But what can we as teachers do to help? We can provide mental health services the best we can. We can start helping as soon as any of these signs show up. 
regular check-ins, one-on-ones with students. I know it's very difficult, especially with teachers who are doing online learning, Zoom calls, but it's also important to just have one-on-ones on occasion. And it is very important to keep routines. Routines are very, it makes children feel secure. Like they understand, like this is, is the one thing they know that they can control and that is in control, routines. So keeping routines is extremely important, starting from infancy, to our high schoolers. It just makes them feel safer. And while there are talks of a vaccine and hopefully when this vaccine comes out, schools will open again and students will be able to catch up. There's the only issue is that we're waiting for the okay from the CDC and transportation. A lot of these vaccines have to be kept in a frequent freezing temperature, a vaccine by Pritzker has to be kept at negative 49 degrees. And that's extremely cold. That's too cold for just your doctor, your pediatrician to have in the refrigerator. There's a max vaccine by Mordina that's at negative four. And that vaccine could be kept at a doctor's office. These vaccines have to be kept in freezing cold temperatures to keep their efficiency up, any drop in temperature will immediately ruin the vaccine and the vaccine will not work. So we're still waiting on how like, transportation is going to work. I know the military has been on it, UPS, the mailing system are trying to figure out how they can keep these vaccines as cold as possible. And even now the CDC is working with doctors to figure out how they are going to keep these vaccines freezing cold in their offices or where people are going to be able to get these vaccines because there is a waiting, a wait line essentially to get the vaccine once it becomes available. Um, It is believed that doctors will be first, nurses, then nurses, then high-risk patients. After that, it will be the elderly and the children. And after that, it will be teachers and then it's everyone else. So hospitals and the CDC are working together to figure out what is the best possible way to get the vaccine out in the U.S. How to get the vaccine out to everyone in the U.S. to make sure everyone's vaccinated and then how to get the vaccine to everyone worldwide. So we just have to wait and see what happens. This concludes my presentation. Thank you very much.